Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Welcome to my guide on Charlotte, our expert photojournalist and new cryo unit that's hot off the press. This video will give the scoop on her kitten talents, constellations, artifact build, weapons, and team comps. Let's get started. Charlotte is a 4-star cryo catalyst user who mainly fulfills the role of an off-field cryo applicator and team healer. Her kit is pretty simple but useful in the right scenarios, so let's review how her talents work. Charlotte's normal attacks are a short 3-hit combo sequence with a stronger 50 stamina cost charge attack that can deal Numa-aligned damage every 6 seconds. Her normal attacks have standard ICD, but the charge attack has no ICD, which can let you apply cryo more frequently at the cost of faster stamina drain. Next is her skill, which has a press and hold version. Pressing it deals cryo damage in front of Charlotte and applies the snappy silhouette mark to a maximum of 5 enemies. This mark lasts for 6 seconds and deals cryo damage at an interval of every 1.5 seconds to enemies. Due to its ICD, every other hit will apply cryo on the same enemy. But this only has a brief 6 second duration, so for more sustained application, that's where the hold version comes in. Holding the skill will make Charlotte enter a viewfinder mode similar to Nahida's skill, and she can also slowly move around while aiming. If you hold it for about 1.5 seconds, the viewfinder animation will significantly expand and that lets her apply an improved mark called Focused Impression instead. This mark deals a bit more damage at 1.5 second intervals but more importantly, it now lasts for 12 seconds. Generally speaking, you'll want to use her hold skill mainly for its better sustained cryo application and since it generates more cryo particles. However, in situations where you can afford the shorter mark duration and cooldown and if there are other units to help battery her burst then using her press skill is fine and shortens her on-field time. Be careful though, Charlotte has no innate interruption resistance increase while she's in the viewfinder mode, which puts her at risk of getting staggered. If she gets staggered before the viewfinder expands, she will only apply the basic mark. So you'll either have to ensure she's safe from enemy attacks that can stagger her, or she has a shield or interruption resistance buff from other sources. You also need to keep the enemies you want to mark inside the viewfinder when it snapshots, otherwise it won't stick. It's not like Nahida's skill where you can mark an enemy while aiming and let them go out of view and the mark will still apply. I guess that is how a camera works after all. So be mindful when using it in intense combat scenarios. Next, Charlotte's Burst contains her healing utility as casting it first deals an instance of cryo damage and heals your entire party for a huge amount of HP. Then it creates a 4 second field that deals cryo damage and heals the active character over time. Her healing scales on her attack stats, so at least getting attack stats has a double purpose of boosting her healing and damage and she can take advantage of external attack buffs. For her Ascension 1 passive, when opponents marked by focused impression are defeated, her skills cooldown will be decreased by 2 seconds and this can trigger up to 4 times with in every 12 seconds. Naturally, it'll only kick in if you're against easy to kill enemy mobs, which can be nice for shorter rotation times. Then for her Ascension 4 passive, we have a region based effect. Having Fontanians in your team makes Charlotte gain a bit more healing bonus, while other regions will give a bit more cryo damage bonus. These are small but welcome buffs, and it does make sense that Fontanian members give more healing bonus since most of them revolve around HP changing mechanics. And for her utility passive, it works with a special analysis zoom lens that should be obtainable in an upcoming 4.2 event. All in all, her gameplay is pretty straightforward. As a support, you'll use her skill to apply cryo and damage over time and burst to heal your teammates and she'll mostly remain off-field until it's time to refresh her abilities. If you're using her as a non-field DPS or driver, then you'll do normal and charged attack combos to output more cryo application and damage and drive any off-field abilities her teammates have. As a support, you should prioritize her burst talent for better healing, followed by her skill talent to increase its damage. Unless you're planning to use her as an on-field DPS, you can save your materials and not level up her normal attack talent anymore. While Charlotte is quite functional at C0, her constellations add helpful effects mainly for her healing output with some energy and damage related improvements too. For C1, after her burst heals a character, they get an added mark that heals them over time every 2 seconds for 6 seconds based on 80% of Charlotte's attack. This is a good upgrade to her survival utility since since her C0's healing over time is restricted to the on-field unit and a bit low, but now it gets a bigger healing value and can continue healing off-field units over time. C1 is one of her better constellations to make her a more comfortable healer, especially when comped with Farina. C2 makes Charlotte's skill give her an attack buff for 12 seconds based on how many enemies are hit. If you can max it out against 3 enemies, this is a somewhat decent gain for both her damage and healing. C3 increases her burst level, which means more healing. C4 is for her energy needs, since when her burst hits an opponent, 
isn't marked by her skill, it deals a bit more damage and more importantly, restores 2 extra energy to Charlotte up to 5 times every 20 seconds. This can reduce Charlotte's ER needs by 10 to 20% to make building her easier. C5 increases her skill level by 3 for more damage. Finally, with C6, if the active character uses a normal or charged attack to hit an opponent with the focused impression mark, Charlotte's camera will deal a coordinated cryo attack and heal the active character. This can only trigger every 6 seconds and is considered as burst damage. With this, it's an extra source of cryo damage, application, and healing, so C6 can complement both her off-field and on-field playstyles. Moving on to Charlotte's artifact build, her preferred stats and sets can vary for either more healing or damage. Your build can be skewed to either rolls or fall somewhere in between. Let's start with her support build, which is what I generally recommend for her. Charlotte's ER target will vary depending if she's comped with other cryo units or have teammates with energy-giving effects. With another cryo teammate and another fav user, she can fall around 180-200% ER, which is high but still manageable. However, if she's the only cryo unit, her ER range shoots up to around 250%, which is a lot. So if she's your team's main survival support, just ensure that her burst recharge will be reliable enough. For her main stats, ER or attack sense, depending if you're still lacking enough ER, an attack goblet, which helps both healing and damage, and an attack or healing bonus circlet. Attack is a balance of damage and healing, but healing bonus gives higher healing overall. For substats, get enough ER to burst every rotation and prioritize attack rolls since that boosts both her healing and damage. Crit rate is also helpful if you're using the Favonius Codex on her and it'll help squeeze more damage from her. When it comes to sets, her recommendations will also be situational. If she's supporting attack scaling units, she can equip the 4-piece Tenacity or 4-piece Noblesse sets for their team-wide attack buff, boosting team damage and her healing. The 4-piece Tenacity works very well with her since her skill does interval damage, which can give it slightly higher potential uptime than the Noblesse set's fixed 12-second uptime. For healing-related sets, there's the Ocean Hued Clam or Maiden Beloved sets. The main difference is that the Clam can provide extra damage from its bubble, while the Maiden set is purely for the strongest healing, so that's already overkill in many situations. If you're in a team where the Noblesse and Tenacity's attack buffs aren't as useful, or with Farina where she needs a lot of healing, then a healing set would be a good alternative instead. There are also 4-star alternatives, which are the Exile and Instructor sets. Exile regenerates energy for her teammates, which can help for very energy-hungry teams, while Instructor gives a team-wide EM bonus, so if you're using her to support reaction-dependent characters, it's also a good option. However, 4-star artifacts have a lower stat ceiling, so that will affect her attack stat and consequently her healing potential. And for a cheap and flexible build, you can go for 2-piece combos of ER, attack, or healing bonus sets. If you're interested in building Charlotte for damage, just be aware that she will output significantly lower damage compared to actual dedicated cryo DPS units, and you won't get the same return of investment. That said, as long as you're okay with it, then by all means, go ahead. In general, she'll follow the path of other cryo DPSs, and if another unit can be your defensive option, then building ER on Charlotte isn't as important anymore. Blizzard Strayer will be her general best set in freeze comps, while some sets are conditionally good if you're using her in a melt comp. And if you're planning to live in the Fontaine artifact domain for a while, then you can give her any leftover golden troop pieces since that still gives her skill a lot of damage bonus for an off-field playstyle. Next are Charlotte's weapon options. For her support catalysts, she has very free-to-play friendly choices. Favonius Codex is extremely helpful for Charlotte's ER needs, especially as a solo cryo unit, while also batterying your team. Prototype Amber offers another source of team healing, which can help in situations where you're taking a lot of damage or draining HP, while also regenerating a bit of the user's energy. The Thrilling Tales gives a huge attack buff to the next teammate, which is useful when supporting attack scaling DPSs. If you have the Oathsworn Eye from its past event, it's also a decent balance of giving the user attack and ER. As for DPS weapons, you just generally look at those with attack, percent, or crit substats that can offer relevant damage bonuses, while EM weapons should only be used in melt teams. 5-star weapons or the 4-star witsis will be her general top options. Be mindful of the damage bonus type some weapons give. For instance, if they're buffing normal or charged attack damage, then you'll have to adapt her playstyle to take advantage of such buffs. Elemental damage bonuses will instead be more flexible in buffing all her damage sources. Finally, let's go over her major team comps and synergies. In a freeze team, Charlotte mainly provides good sustained cryo application while consolidating your survival needs. Freezing enemies before you use her hold skill can also help her avoid getting staggered from enemy attacks, making her feel a bit more comfortable to use. Freeze teams generally don't need very strong healing as well, since the enemies are ideally crowd controlled often enough that they won't be able to hit you as much, if at all. In such cases, you can skew her build more towards damage than healing. However, one major exception to this is if you're playing a freeze team with Farina, since Farina drains your entire team's HP for her buffs. In this case, you will want to build Charlotte for more healing.
healing so she can better mitigate Farina's HP drain. Charlotte does feel like a very suitable teammate for Farina Free Seams as she conveniently consolidates the role of cryo application over time and team healing. Another template that makes good use of Freeze are Bloom based reaction teams. This requires good Hydro and Dendro applicator teammates who will generate Dendro cores from enemies, while Charlotte's cryo application will consistently freeze them for crowd controlling and helping in core generation. While a pure Bloom team is possible, doing a Bloom team without Nilu isn't as great in terms of damage, and Charlotte can't work with Nilu's restriction. Instead, we can add an Electro or Pyro unit that can trigger Hyper Bloom or Burgeon to help increase the team's damage potential. In general, Hyper Bloom is the better and easier route. Charlotte can be your on-field driver, and if you're also using Farina as a Hydro applicator, then Charlotte's healing will mitigate Farina's HP drain. For Burgeon, Charlotte's cryo application also helps counteract potential Pyro or burning auras on enemies, which can then allow more consistent core generation. I think that Freeze and Fridge variants will be her ideal teams. Another team you could consider is Reverse Melt Teams, where she could provide healing and a bit of off-field damage, or maybe you're actually using her as your on-field cryo DPS. To enable Pyro application, this is typically done with a Bennett Chungling combo, a Sunfire combo, or a Burn combo with Nahida. However, with Bennett already a staple in most Reverse Melt teams, that can make Charlotte's healing quite redundant, and since she doesn't output great damage, I generally just recommend using another cryo DPS or support that can output more damage or buffs. But if you just want more comfort, then Bennett and Charlotte will give a lot of healing together while getting her own melt numbers in. Forward melt teams are also a possibility, which involves a pyro DPS with more controlled application like Diluc. Since pyro gets rid of the cryo aura faster, you'll need multiple fast enough cryo sources so pyro hits can melt consistently. In a mono cryo team, she can be your survival support which frees up all other slots for offensive characters. If you have Shenhe, her quill stacks will give Charlotte a huge but limited base damage buff. Charlotte can then front load all the quill stacks by using her burst, which does very fast cryo hits. And since having 2-3 cryo teammates lowers her ER needs significantly, you also have more room to build offensive stats on her. As very niche mentions, she can also go in a vape melt team to introduce some melts, assuming enemies are freezable, or a physical team where she can act as a superconduct trigger, assuming you don't have a cryo DPS or support doing that already. And that's the story on Charlotte. She's got a pretty basic support kit, but if healing and cryo application are what you're looking for, then she has you covered. For newer players who don't have a huge roster and are pulling on Farina's banner, it also feels like Charlotte's there to ensure that you have at least another healer other than Barbara to help add more team building options that can work with Farina's HP draining mechanics. Let me know in the comments what you think of her. And if this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care.